I'm really excited to be here in Bern for the European Championships and it's great preparation for us on our lead up to Rio. Can you tell us how you started, what age, what club? Um, I started gymnastics when I was seven years old and I got into it mainly because my friend at school was kind of doing flips and tricks in the playground and um, it looked cool so I kind of went along to one of her sessions and from there I never really looked back. And, my first club was Bigwood Gymnastics Club and that was kind of a feeder club to Notch Gymnastics Academy and I went to Notch when I was nine and I've been there ever since. When did you realise, when did your coaches realise that you had the potential to become a world, world class athlete? Um, I think when I won my first British title when I was 12, um, it was kind of leading into that um, was when they really started to kind of notice my talent and then when I actually won the title from then on we kind of just continued to strive forwards. Um, You've been on the national team for a long time, <laughs> basically since the, the beginning of the success of yeah. Team GB. How have you experienced the, the guise of British Gymnastics? Um, yeah, it has changed so much and it's so nice now, I was just saying earlier, that we can kind of come to championships fighting for medals rather than just coming to compete and it makes it so much more exciting and when you do really have something to fight for it, it, as a, yeah, it just makes it more exciting and it's more fun and it is more pressure at the same time, but a good kind of pressure. Has the media attention changed a lot for you? Not massively. I mean, within our sport it has, so leading into any major championships we have like a media day at our national centre and um, the media after competitions does kind of increase a little bit, but then within a couple of weeks it dies down and we're back in the gym and just kind of doing our thing and try to fit everything in the best we can in between. And do you like all the attention? Um, sometimes yes and sometimes no. I mean, it's always hard when the media do come in if you're not having the best day in the, in the gym. Um, but that's something that you just have to deal with. Not every day is going to be perfect. And equally, it's great when they come in and you're having a great day. And um, we manage to work around them. And usually, they work with us very well. So we can kind of get on with our training schedules. And then they work, work in between. And what about the fans you have in, um, in Great Britain? Uh, the popularity also of British gymnastics, thanks to your success and the success of the men, of course, as well, um, has risen a lot. And British gymnastics, if you look at their Facebook, their, their yeah. Twitter, it's insane. Yeah. Um, do you have people that recognize you on the street? Um, we, we do more now, um, and especially like when we went to our British Championships, say, four or five years ago, it was so hard just to get about 200 people in the audience, whereas this British Championships, the most recent one that we did, especially with it being an Olympic year, we sold out a huge arena, and that was such a, like, a massive achievement, not just for us, but like British gymnastics as a whole. It was just an incredible thing, and to be able to come out to all the fans and kind of celebrate the successes and just the success of British gymnastics in general, it's just come such a long way, and hopefully it can continue. Um, since you're not doing all around anymore, do you feel it's more difficult to make the team as a bars and beam specialist? Um, yeah, I'd say it's, it's a lot more pressure because bars and beam are the, probably two, two of the most technical pieces anyway. Um, so the pressure, I'd say, has increased. Like floor and vault, I feel if you're good at floor and vault, they're easier pieces to kind of get through. Um, but equally, it makes it more exciting and I, it's more challenging in the gym because your routines have got to be, obviously, a bit harder. Um, but yeah, no, it's all good fun and just kind of take it one day at a time. Uh, how is the selection process going to go for the Olympic team? Um, well, for the, I'm not 100% sure about the boys, but for the girls, we've been told that everything that we do from really like last year's World Championships through to this, whenever the team is announced in the summer, um, is going to be included. So not just all of our competitions, but our training in the camps, um, our training at home, like we have our national coaches come to our individual clubs and kind of just watch a train every now and again. Um, and yeah, everything's been taken into consideration, which I think is really important because it can make it a lot harder if it's based off just one or two competitions. Um, I think with it being based off everything, makes it, it's going to make it the best team it can be. And how do you 
feel about your chances? <laughs> Um, at the moment, I've, I feel like I'm in a nice place, and I mean, so far I've had my ups and downs this year, but I mean, nothing for me has ever runs dead smoothly, um, so that's not unusual for me. Um, but no, overall, I'm very, very pleased, and I'm very pleased with how my performance has went yesterday, and hopefully we can carry that through into the team final here, and hopefully finals as well someday. And for your sister as well, do you think you, you'll both get to go? Um, that's definitely the aim, and... Yeah, we're both. I think we're both feeling like at the moment things are going in the right direction and there's still definitely improvements we can make and more that we can do and we still have a few trials left when we get back home following this championships and um, just taking it one day at a time. Um, you were in Rio for the test event. How did you experience the hall <laughs> and the atmosphere, Rio itself? Um, I actually loved it. We went out actually before the test event as a team in, at the end of January. Um, so we got to take eight girls with us um, and just experience kind of the feel of Rio. We actually got to see a little bit of the Olympic Village and it was so nice to experience it as a team because obviously not that many girls are going to get to go back in the summer. And then for the test event, again, for me, because we'd already been me and Gabby, it felt very familiar, very just comfortable there. And my training there was probably the best training I'd had um, in kind of competition environment for a long time. So the whole trip was a great trip, just I didn't have the most brilliant competition. <laughs> um, but overall, no, I really enjoyed it. What is the biggest difference, or do you see any difference between the lead-up going into your first Olympics, Beijing, and now? Um, I'd say Beijing, because this kind of success of British gymnastics in the sport wasn't as high, I was kind of one of the top all-arounders, and I felt like I was fighting for a space on the team, but I felt like my spot was quite safe, um, whereas now, leading into it, there's so many more girls, um, and everybody's kind of pushing each other in the success, and as you said, the media's growing, it's all, it's all a bit bigger and a bit more heightened, but... It, Again, this is my third cycle and I feel a lot more experienced. So um, they're both very different, but this Olympic cycle has definitely been my favorite. Um, let's talk about some gymnastics now. <laughs> um, are there any skills that you've, you've been scared of performing? Um, there's one skill I do in my beam um, that I absolutely hate, my free cartwheel layout. Um, it's just one skill that I don't enjoy. I don't enjoy training it, I don't enjoy competing it. Um, but that's probably the only thing that um, I don't really like out of my gymnastics, everything else I feel pretty comfortable with. <laughs> but you still compete it? I still compete it. I'm usually pretty good at competing it. Um, I just don't like it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How do you keep motivated to come to compete for such a long time, under a lot of pressure, with injuries? How, what's your biggest motivation to keep going? Um, I think just my genuine love for the sport. Um, and to know I have always felt that I had more in me to do and I haven't, I still don't think I've reached my full potential yet and I'm hoping that there's still more to come but just my genuine love for the sport and if I just even have a couple of days off I miss it so um, it has not really been much of a chore for me. I mean there are days when it's hard but I do really enjoy it and love what I do. What has been your proudest moment so far in gymnastics? Um, probably say there's like three so my first was probably making the Olympic team for Beijing I think it's just such a special thing to be able to say you're an Olympian for the rest of your life um, and my probably my proudest was being European champion in 2014 um, especially after all the injuries and the struggles and the what happened in the London 2012 cycle that was a really hard cycle for me um, so that was probably my best my best memory to date and then um, our world team medal. Um, that's definitely another really special moment. Um, it's a first for British gymnastics and to be able to have Ellie with me as well to do that was just incredible. Do you think you could repeat that in Rio? That's definitely the aim. I mean the girls we haven't produced a team Olympic medal before. The, the men have done it so that's been a, a huge inspiration to us um, and the fact that we managed to do it at Worlds last year again that's a massive inspiration. It's just kind of really spurred the team on and we know that in gymnastics nothing is safe um, but everybody's pushing to be the best that they can be and the real team focus is to try and achieve that medal. Have you thought about what you want to do after Rio? Uh, long term I do want to coach. Um, I started working on my coaching qualifications and in Britain you go from a level one to a level five and the level five is like a high performance and I'm almost completed my level three so I'm kind of halfway there. Um, and yeah, long term I do want to coach, just not 100% sure if I want to do elite or maybe look into doing NCAA or um, I'm not sure what kind of what area I want to go into yet. And do you coach now as well? Um, I've done a little bits of coaching. I obviously, with this year being such an important year and even last year, I haven't done a lot of coaching, but I've had to do bits of coaching to get those qualifications um, to where I'm at, at now. Um, but to go obviously to the higher levels, I do definitely need to learn a lot more. <laughs> 
can you tell us, like, to, tomorrow you have a team final. How would your day look like? How do you get ready for such an important fi final? Um, so tomorrow we will, uh, as far as I'm aware, the team finals in the evening. So we're going to do a session in the morning and it's not like a massive session for us. It's more just to kind of wake your bodies up, get them moving. And we usually cover all of our skills on bars and beam. And if any of the girls feel like they needed to do anything on floor and vault, if they had the opportunity, they could. But it's, you, you, they usually rest their legs. Um, and so, yeah, we have a short session, we get moving. Um, after, obviously, after breakfast, then we have lunch and um, relax at the hotel, get any treatments, physio, and then kind of just relax, chill out in our rooms, hair, makeup, all of that kind of thing. Um, mm. And then, yeah, come down to the competition arena and, again, we do stretch out, warm up and get going. You always look amazing you know, before the competition. <laughs> How long does it actually take to, to do all the girls' hair and <laughs> get ready? Thank you. Um, I don't know. I mean, for me, I did Ellie's hair yesterday. Um, she wanted her hair, like, braiding down the sides and I did hers in about half an hour. Um, Ruby's normally the team hairdresser for when the girls have their hair like this at the front. Um, so Ruby, norm everyone normally goes to Ruby's room and gets their hair done. <laughs> um, she can do it quite quickly. And then makeup, everybody does their individual makeup. Um, usually for me, her makeup's quite quick. Ellie can take up to at least an hour on her makeup. Um, everybody's different. Um, I know Ruby and Claudia, they also take a long time to get ready. Like Ruby had her hair done and ready yesterday, two hours before we even had to be here. Um, but everyone just kind of has their own routine and um, just appreciate that and we enjoy getting ready. It's one of the best bits. <laughs> um, how does your family and mum feel uh, about having two girls competing at the <laughs> highest level? It must be quite pressure on her as well. <laughs> yeah, I think she finds it pretty nerve-wracking and I think she's looking forward to actually when we're going to both be finished. <laughs> um, but no, I, overall, I think they, the whole family really enjoys it. We have a big family. There's five siblings. Um, I'm the second eldest and Ellie's the youngest out of the five. Um, but yeah, no, we really enjoy it and they all support us massively and they can't always come to every event because obviously it's costly and I mean this year especially they're saving for Rio. Um, but overall, no, they're really proud. So your family will all come to Rio? Um, our mum and stepdad are definitely coming to Rio. Um, they booked it about a year ago and um, it was a bit of a risk. And I think with anyone, it's the gamble of do you do it, do you not? But with me and Ellie, we were like, well, with it, the dream is two. And if we don't get two, we should get one. So they were in a great position to book. <laughs> um, so yeah, they booked it and it's all happening. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing you all in Rio and supporting Team GB.